Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am back to talk about my summer favourites. So my bookish, but mainly non-bookish things that I've been loving through June, July and August. Major improvement from spring into summer is that my eyes obviously got better, which does make me think that potentially the issues that I was having were allergy related. But that's also really, really weird to me because my hay fever has never manifested with the eye issues that I was having. Upshot of that is that I can wear makeup again. Yay! First of all, problem said it's finest. But in that interim period between May and June, where I was waiting for my optician and for the doctor at the eye hospital to work out what was wrong with me, I was definitely leaning on some of these favourites as kind of like comforts. You'll know if you've been watching my wrap ups that I've been reading a lot of romance books recently, which is usually my go to comfort read. And I feel like that kind of like comfort listening, comfort watching, comfort eating has kind of filtered through to the rest of my favourites, to be honest. But without much further ado, let's just get straight into these favourites. As I say, these favourites are generally reserved for non book things but I do always like to throw at least one or two books in and I would have to say that the standout book for me in summer has been The Secrets of Hartwood Hall by Katie Lumsden. I feel like I'm constantly talking about how great this book is and I will link for you down below my review video where I talked about this in more depth but this is a fantastic Victorian historical fiction following the main character of Margaret Lennox as she moves to Hartwood Hall to be a governess. The house and its residents are a bit of a mystery but so is Margaret herself and as the title would suggest The Secrets of Hartwood Hall start to come tumbling out. This is just such a fantastic book such a beautiful love letter to Victorian literature, particularly the Brontes, as well as very much being its own thing. I love Katie's writing, it's very clean and nothing like superfluous, but also so incredibly evocative. Yeah, I just don't have enough good things to say about this one. In terms of film and TV, I actually, in the summer months, watched three new films at the cinema. I, number one, rarely go to the cinema at all. And number two, I'm just generally very, very bad at watching new to me TV shows and films. It's something that's always one of my New Year's resolutions that I never stick to is, yes, this year I'm going to listen to more music, watch more TV shows, watch more films that are new to me. And I never ever do it. I always go back to things that I already know that I love. As I said already, I'm quite a comfort watcher. <laughs> I'm very much like, well, I know that I like this thing. Whereas I have a lot of anxiety about what if I don't like this thing that I've been building up in my head? What if it disappoints me? But I think you'll also see from these new to me films that these can definitely class as like comfort watches. <laughs> the three new films that I saw and enjoyed being The Little Mermaid, The Barbie Movie, and Red, White, and Royal Blue. <laughs> I will say right off the bat that I don't think that any of these films are absolutely perfect. There are definitely like little nitpicks that I have for them, but I feel like these three films were just the perfect like summer trifecta of comfort and just loveliness. Little Mermaid obviously being one of my favourite Disney films growing up. If you ever sit down with my mum, she will regale you with the first time that I had swimming lessons and I pretended that I was Ariel in the swimming pool. I just could not pay attention to the swimming instructor because I was just there like, come on Scuttle, come on Flounder. I was a very embarrassing child. I am always very, very sceptical of the Disney live action remakes. My two favourite Disney films of all time are Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin and Oh, I cannot watch their live action remakes. I just don't think they're very good. Like there are definitely good elements to them, but overall I'm just like, what is this? And while I don't think I would ever go to the live action Little Mermaid over the original if push came to shove, I do think for the most part it was really well done. I thought Halle Bailey was such a wonderful casting for Ariel. She has such a gorgeous, gorgeous voice that suits the character so well. And I think it's worth watching the film just for her performance alone. And her chemistry between her and the guy who was playing Eric, whose name has escaped my brain, was just so, so lovely. I love the additional scenes between the two of them. I definitely do have some criticism for this film. I feel like there were other casting choices they could have gone for for Ursula and for King Triton. Like I think Melissa McCarthy and Javier Bardem were fine but I feel like they could have gotten better people for it and some acting choices that I thought were just a bit eh. There were some moments with the underwater CGI that was a little bit uncanny valley but this for me is definitely like up there with one of the better live action remakes and definitely one that I would watch again. The Barbie movie I just had such a great time with. I've had quite a few people asking me if I've watched Oppenheimer. Did I do Barbieheimer? Because they're like hey Charlie, you like history. What do you think about this film? Are you interested in it? And the honest answer is no. <laughs> I just can't really get myself to care about the Oppenheimer movie. That was not the brain space that I've been in. I'm sure eventually I'll watch it, but at the same time, I'm also like, ugh. But Barbie, I was all over that. It was just such good fun. I think the performances, especially of Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling were fantastic. They just nailed these characters. I think the set design is absolutely incredible. And the fact that it's all done practically, I don't think any CGI was used for the Barbie set, which is just astounding to me. And if it doesn't at the very least get nominated for an Oscar, if not win for set design, then I just don't know where this world is coming to. I did feel towards the middle, like the script got a little bit off-piste. I do feel like the whole Will Ferrell plotline could have been scrapped, but for the general 
whole vibes and atmosphere this was just exactly what I wanted and I know a lot of people have been messaging me about the BBC Pride and Prejudice moment that happened <laughs> during the course of the film if you don't know what I'm talking about please watch the film to find out you'll definitely look at that and be like oh yeah that's Charlotte and my friend who I was watching it with just kind of looked at me and laughed <laughs> as I just slid down in my chair like don't look at me because <laughs> it was just very on the nose and then Red White and Royal Blue obviously the adaptation of Casey McQuiston's romance novel otherwise known as one of my favorite romance books of all time once again a proper comfort read for me and I was generally quite pleased with this adaptation I definitely feel like there were some changes that it made that I was not very happy with for example I was very very sad that they cut out June Alex's sister I don't really understand why they cut out Raphael Luna and I honestly was not a big fan of the new character that they put in in replacement for him and how they used that character to reveal the relationship between Alex and Henry like if you did properly sit me down to talk about it I could rant about it for a very long time but once again for the general vibe generally getting across the premise of the book I thought it did a really good job you know it's fun it's silly there are these little romantic moments that just make your heart go oh the main thing that I left this film feeling was that they actually could have like expanded this into like a three or four episode miniseries if it hadn't been a film if they'd given it a little bit more time to breathe then they could have really drilled home a lot of the plot points that they had to miss and I feel like for book purists that would have been a lot more satisfying it's definitely still a film that I think I'm going to go back to because I had a really good time with it but once again the, the general theme for all of these films is I enjoyed it I had a great time the vibes were great but I do have like these tiny little things that are keeping it from being like a new all-time favorite but for right now where I am in my brain they were very pleasing to me they made my brain happy at current time of filming I've only actually seen one show in summer though we are just around the corner from my week in London where I'm going to be filling up on as much theatre as possible so that's definitely something that I will talk about in my autumn favourites but the one show that I did see at the beginning of August was Groundhog Day the musical which I feel kind of bad talking about because I do think that it's about to close but if you do ever get a chance to see Groundhog Day the musical I really highly recommend it I believe the music is done by Tim Minchin based of course on the film of the same name where you're following this very grumpy misanthropic weather reporter called Phil who every year has to go to Puxatawney Pennsylvania to cover this event called Groundhog Day which is based around the superstition that if this groundhog called Puxatawney Phil sees its shadow then the town is going to have winter for another six weeks it's this big fun tradition everybody is all dancing all singing but our main character Phil is not convinced by any of this he's very jaded he's very bitter and he just wants to get out of this small town as quickly as possible but when he wakes up the next day he notices that everything has reverted to the previous day nobody else seems to notice that as he keeps on going the day keeps on repeating again and again and again and so we're seeing Phil coming to terms with the fact that he is just stuck in this time loop and he doesn't know how to get out now the film is something that I have seen but I wasn't very attached to so I wasn't sure what I was going to make of the show but I do think it was really good fun some of the stage magic and trickery in order to get Phil back into the bed from like other sides of the stage whenever it's time to repeat a day again I, I don't know how they do it I imagine it must be something to do with like trapdoors and doubles but it is just expertly done just witnessing that is worth the price of admission alone I'll be honest the music in this isn't like quite my thing when it comes to musical theatre I don't think I'm going to be listening to the soundtrack but while I was there I did really enjoy listening to the songs I thought the performances across the board were pretty great but especially from Andy Carl who plays Phil I imagine that must be such a hard character to get right because as an audience member we're meant to be like fairly sympathetic to him even at the beginning of the show when he's pretty awful he's still got to manage to get his on side even as he's being like so brutal and sarcastic and at some points kind of cruel but then we also have to believe him as he transitions to becoming a better person a kinder person and I feel like he hit all of those character beats so so well I don't know what the plan is after it's left the old Vic whether it's going on tour but if you ever get a chance to see the show I really highly recommend it now for some miscellaneous favorites I have been very much living of this gorgeous yellow dress from Nobody's Child I picked this up for a wedding and I very quickly realized that this isn't really very wedding gay but it's exactly the kind of dress that I just like to wear every day and it just made me feel like really bright and sunny this is kind of a midi length dress buttons all the way down a bit of a v-neck so I always wear a bandeau with it and yeah just lovely and bright and colorful and I've had a great time with this generally my clothes that I've gotten from Nobody's Child have been a big favorite recently in a similar vein I have these gorgeous wide leg trousers that I've got from them which I've just been wearing to death apologies for anybody who feels uncomfortable when we talk about undergarments but I am wanting to give a bit of a shout out to my sports bra <laughs> not kind of favorite that I've ever done recently but this has been an absolute lifesaver so you may be able to tell you may not from my videos that I am off the larger chested variety <laughs> and if you yourself are off a similar bust size to me then you will know that it is very very hard to find bras that fit and are at a good price and that are very readily available in fact I would say it is almost impossible so typically if I need to go bra shopping then I have to go to Bravissimo and I've never in my life owned a sports bra because I find that most sports bras at sports shops are the most flimsy unappealing things they just do not work for me however recently I was in Bravissimo and I came across this sports bra I will leave the full name 
name of it down below, but this has just been the best thing ever. It's incredibly supportive. It's also a gorgeous colour. And I feel like this has just been changing the game for me when it comes to exercising. Had I, at school, been allowed to wear a sports bra like this and also being able to wear sports leggings, like things could have been very, very different for my exercise journey. Any current PE teachers, please take note. Okay, apologies, we are out of the bra section. Another miscellaneous favourite has been these Fox's Viennese biscuits. These plus another type that I'm going to put on the screen have just been the most scrumptious biscuits that I have recently bought. I can't even properly describe for you the texture but these Viennese biscuits are kind of like a fancier shortbread like so much richer so much more full of flavour and they are incredibly Moorish the only annoying thing is that there's only like eight of them per packet and they are quite expensive, so they're a bit of a treat. I've been very much enjoying these. Another food treat that I've recently been enjoying is almond croissants. So I recently went to London for a friend's wedding. I was staying in a hotel and we did treat ourselves to the breakfast there, which had a continental as well as a hot breakfast. And I generally am not a big fan of croissants, especially just the general butter croissants. I just think they're a bit bland. But I picked up an almond croissant at this birthday. I don't wanna be dramatic, but it's changed my life. Life will never be the same again. Because obviously not only do they have the almonds flaked on top of the pastry, but inside there's this layer of like almond sugary paste and it is the most scrumptious thing. And I need to be stopped from eating these. In terms of general life experience favourites, in June we performed our showcase, the theme of which was On the Steps of the Palace. It was musical theatre and operetta songs that had to do with royalty. The song that I was involved with was a regular royal queen from the gondoliers, in which I was singing Giannetta's part. Unfortunately I don't have like a recording of that to show for you. We also did a 13 minute medley of the Prince of Egypt which is my favourite thing and the fact that I don't get to sing that anymore actually breaks my heart. I've always wanted to perform the songs from the Prince of Egypt especially the song The Plagues. It's one of my favourite songs of all time and so just getting the opportunity to sing that was just <sighs> And another great experience from summer is one that happened just last weekend for me at the time of filming, which was the big booktuber meetup, which was organised by Katie over at Books and Things, where we basically met up at Waterstones Piccadilly and then just journeyed all around lots of different bookshops in London. I think at one point there were 27 of us. And because I had been to Katie's book launch, I was kind of 50-50 on some of these booktubers who I had met before and some who I was meeting for the first time. There were a few that were completely new to me. And it was just such a lovely, lovely experience getting to meet everybody, getting to have conversations with people and just generally being with a group of people who all love books and just getting to enthuse and gush about our favourite books over the course of what six seven hours it was such a fantastic fantastic day and if we do any more booktuber meetups like this I am definitely going back I just had such a wonderful time so there we go those are all of my favourites from June July August do let me know of any favourites that you had I'd especially love to know your thoughts on any of the films that I've spoken about have you similarly had a summer of comfort films do let me know what you thought I would love to hear from you I hope you're having a fantastic fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!